was. I am, quite literally, from another age. I was born during the Holocene, the name given by scientists to the 12,000 year period of climatic stability that allowed humans to settle, farm, and create civilizations. Those conditions fostered our unique minds, giving rise to international trade in ideas, as well as goods, and making us the globally connected species that we are today. Much of what will be discussed here is the consequence of that stability. Global businesses, international cooperation, and the striving for ideals, these are all possible because for millennia, on a global scale, nature has been largely predictable and stable. Now, in the space of one human lifetime, indeed, in the space of my lifetime, all that has changed. The Holocene has ended. The Garden of Eden is no more. We have changed the world so much that scientists say that we are now in a new geological age, the Anthropocene, the age of humans. When you think about it, there is perhaps no more unsettling thought. The only conditions modern humans have ever known so far are changing, and changing fast. It's tempting and understandable to ignore the evidence and carry on as usual, or to be filled with gloom and doom. But there is also a vast potential for what we might do. We need to move beyond guilt or blame and get on with the practical tasks in hand. We didn't get to this point deliberately. It just happened astonishingly quickly. When I made my first television programs, most of the audiences had never seen a pangolin. Indeed, a few pangolins had ever seen a television camera. But when, in 1979, I made a series tracing the history of life on Earth, I was aware of environmental problems, but I didn't imagine that we were fundamentally changing nature. In 1999, while I was making the Blue Planet series about marine life, we filmed coral bleaching, but I still didn't appreciate the magnitude of the damage that had already started. Now, however, we have evidence, knowledge, and the ability to share it on a scale unimaginable even just a few years ago. Movements and ideas can spread at astonishing speed. The audience for that first series uh, 60 years ago was restricted to just a few million viewers in southern England. My next series, Our Planet, which is about to be launched here, will go instantly to hundreds of millions of people in almost every country on Earth via Netflix. And the evidence supporting the series will be free to view by everybody with an internet connection via WWF. If people can truly understand what is at stake, I believe that they will give permission to business and governments to get on with the practical solutions. And as a species, we are expert problem solvers. But we haven't yet applied ourselves to this problem with the focus that it requires. We can create a world with clean air and water, unlimited energy, and fish stocks that will sustain us well into the future. But to do that, we need a plan. 
Over the next two years, there will be United Nations decisions on climate change, sustainable development, and a new deal for nature. Together, these will form our species plan for a route through the Anthropocene. What we do now and in the next few years will profoundly affect the next few thousand years. I look forward very much to the discussions and insights that will go on here this week. And I thank you again for this very great honor. Thank you.